Yesterday we did the master page and to do application, which was the copy of the master page. I will do a few more examples of this. Uh, yesterday I copy pasted it, but I will do again each line by line. I'll write it in a couple of more projects in few days. But let's try to do few more things in the master page. One of the things I want to do is pagination. And another thing which I want to do is search kind of thing, like this search. So let's try to do both the things. So for example, I will take the text field for the search part. So I'll go here in the my routing or in the master. And I'll replace this text with the text field. Let's import the text field. So this text box, this text field will be, you know, the, this text field will be for search part. Let's say you want to search something. Let's put this above the total count. Let's remove the add part now. And on the change, I will I will update some variable here. <coughs> so when I am when I try to change the when I try to change the search field so it's a kind of keyword. User will put the keyword and uh, state. Okay, let's talk about uh, what we will do on the value and on change part. So let me create. Uh, let me create. another state variable which will keep track of uh, which will keep track of this okay maybe I'll, I'll put it here keyword it is initially null so I'll keep track of that state variable keyword that when user will try to change I will update it here so what I'm trying to do So on handle change, I will create the handle change part here. So let's copy the handle change function also here. So what what does handle change is doing? Handle change is taking the name value and updating the state with the name and value. So right now it will be the keyword. Okay, so it will be the keyword. So let's test it now. So when I try to change the keyword, we will update it in the state variable. Let's try to check. Okay, so this is the master page. I see the keyword here. So whenever I try to change the keyword, maybe I can say why 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 this why so i'll try to put why 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 you will see in the state we have the keyword equal to why 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 but i need one button also because as soon as user will type if i go to the server again and again it is too much costly thing so let the user put the keyword and then i will give the submit button and that submit button will call the backend server with the keyword which user has provided. Okay, so we need some button. Right now, I'm updating the state variable, but I'm not filtering this data based on the keyword. Because if I try to filter it now, I have to send the server request again and again, and that is too costly. I want user to put whatever he wants to put in the keyword, 
and then I will call server request. So I need one button here so that I can call that button whenever I want. I will put the button also. So let's put outline button this time. So after this I will create another div. And button has to be imported. And now on click of this one button I will search. I will make this full width and I will on click of it I will do something. Okay, let's try to do this one. Okay, search button is there. I need some spacing. Maybe I'll put style equal to margin top 15 pixel. Okay, so I have some spacing at the top. Let's try to put margin bottom also. Okay, so user will put keyword and click search. When user will click search, I will call the server request with that keyword and filter the results. For example, E33, it is present in this one. I should show this one. If I pa part three, if I put 33, it is present in these two and I should show these two. So that is what we have to do. So when user will type something, I will not do anything. When user will click search, then I will, right now it's calling hi, but then we have to call the server request with this keyword. Okay. I'll be back in one minute. By the time you you try to put this text field and the button and I'll be back in two minutes. So just try to add this part and this part. These two things you put it in two minutes, I'll be back in two minutes. So I'll continue with this. Those who have completed it's okay, otherwise you can do afterwards. So now we need to actually create, we need two variables actually here. <coughs> One is the keyword, 
which is update which is getting update once we type in the text box so this is the text box I am typing something I am updating this keyword but when I click the search button I need another variable the duplicate of this keyword which I want to pass it to the backend server if I try to pass this keyword to the backend server every time I try to change it it will go to the server and request a new response from the server so I cannot keep this keyword uh, to at both the places when user will click search button or when user will change the keyword so I need another variable which will be updated when user will click the search button okay so let's try to create that one so for that I will create another <coughs> another variable called as keyword direct keyword this keyword is inside the state which will change which will be changed on the change of the text box but this keyword will get updated when user will click the search button so what I'll do I'll create keyword and set keyword another state variable initially I'll give it maybe yeah empty kind of thing or null null is fine because we are not attaching to any text box if we attach to text box we need to put the null like uh, we need to put the empty string but since this keyword is only updated when user will click the search button so we don't need so we don't need the empty string we'll put the null now what I will do when someone will click the search button this search button I will update I will update the keyword with the state dot keyword this keyword keep the value state dot keyword okay, so I'll update the state value of the keyword to the keyword why I created two keywords one keyword is when user will change the input box what is the use of another keyword this keyword will be updated when user will click the search button then I will update the keyword with the this keyword so someone will put here for example dog when user will click the search button I will take this dog value and update the keyword with the dog value because this keyword will go to the server whenever the keyword is changed whenever we change this keyword automatically it will call the server and get the data back and that is why I'm not using this to get the data back because this will be changed on the change of the input box whenever user will try to change input box this will get changed and I don't want to call the server again and again therefore I'm not I don't want to use this for the server call I want to use something to the server call which when gets changed we call the server so this one will only be called when someone will click the search button this one will be called when input bo box is changed and whenever this keyword is changed we will call the server and get the data back so how to call the server we will pass this keyword we will pass this keyword in the get record function by okay by putting it here as a dependency so keyword will go here as a dependency in the react use effect this is the react use effect we, we have to put this keyword in the dependency part and this dependency keyword will go and this keyword will go here in the get records and here we will say yesterday I showed you what what we have to say I will just copy the I'll copy the text we need to use this match so here I will say if keyword is there 
then only we call this line of statement query dot matches which field we want to call title and what we want to pass as a value keyword so whatever user has put keyword that will go to the server and get all the matches based on this keyword so what we did we pass the keyword here and this keyword will go here and we it matches it if it, if it gets a match it will get the data based on whatever we send as a keyword okay I will ask all these questions again once I'm done to know to see if you have understood so if I put dog the dog will go to the server and as soon as I click the search and give me the results based on dog is there or not so right now there's no dog so we don't get we get zero records let's try to put something if I empty it I'll get all the records let's try to put three three so we get two records <coughs> which are matching with the three three if I put e three three so what is happening when I change this keyword this part input box then only only state variable is changed this part is changed but as soon as user clicks the search button this search button we take this keyword whatever user has put it and we copy it to this keyword and since this keyword is passed here as a dependency that means whenever the keyword will change everything inside will re-render and it will go to the server with this keyword whatever user has put and we get the new data so we don't have to pass manually keyword here in the get record whenever the keyword is changed whenever this keyword is changed it will automatically go inside the use effect and we will get the updated updated this value okay so let's try again if I search one so one is only this one okay so let me repeat the thing again what this keyword is doing can anyone tell me this is this keyword is input data whenever we change the input value it changes here so I'm writing here for your reference this will be changed when someone will put in the input box of keyword so we update this value when someone will try to change the input box when this will changed can anyone tell me when this part is getting changed when user will click the submit button then I will call the set keyword and change the value of keyword okay so this will this will be changed when someone will someone will click the search button and keyword value is updated now why I'm not using this keyword only removing this uh, entirely the reason is I don't want to call the server on the slight change of this keyword if I want to call the server on the slight change of the keyword then I don't need this I will use only this part but since now I want user to put in the search box 
and we call search, uh, server only when user will click search button. So we need to create another variable which will be tracked when the search button is clicked. Now in the React use effect, we can pass the dependencies. What this dependency means? This dependency means whenever this keyword is changed, then we have to re-render re all this thing inside the use effect. So whenever the keyword value is changed, that is whenever the search button is clicked, keyword value is changed, we have to re-render everything inside it. That means get record is called again. And now keyword is passed. That means we need to use the if condition also. And it will take care of if condition also. So whenever the keyword is changed, that means whenever the search button is clicked, keyword is changed and we call this this get record again and we get the data based on whatever user has put. So here I will write down keyword is a dependency variable which when changed on clicking the submit button or search button which when changed will call everything inside this use effect. That means whenever the keyword value is changed, everything inside will get re-rendered again. That means get record will be called again and we, we can take care of this keyword, whatever user has put. And we call the server again with the keyword and we get the results. And that's what happening here. I will put something like DFDF. Since I put a space in the end, so it is trying to get that, so it was not getting anything. So right now it's saying we get three record. If I remove it, I am getting yeah, DFDF, a lot of DFDF is here. Let's try to put mango, only man. If I put man also, it will work. It will take any of the part inside the string which we have. So is this, is this part clear, how we are trying to get the keyword and searching it? Now, this is the first part done. Now we have to take care of the pagination. So for pagination, we need two more variables for pagination we need two more variables. One is called page number and set page as react.useState. Initially let it be zero. It will start always with the zero and it goes zero, one, two, three. So though, though, because user will not be able to see the, you know, zero, user will see one, but in the back end we need to consider it is zero. So zero means the first page, one is the second page, like that. And I also need another one, that is a max number. How many records per page you want? Set max. And here I will say react dot use state. Maybe I can say 10 or one record per page. Just want to show you two record per page. So we created two variables for the pagination. One is called page and the max. And this, whenever the page number is changed, we need to call this get query part, this get query part. Because when user go to second page, we have to call the get record with that page number two. So here I will pass another parameter called as page and I will also pass the max. So whenever the page or max is changed, we need to call the get record again and we need to use it here in this part. So how to use the get record? I already showed you. We have to use query.skip. This is the one thing we have to use. 
from where we have to start and another is query dot limit. Limit is the maximum number you want to show. So this is the maximum number we are passing it. I will put max. But here I will not pass page. Okay. Now you have to tell me what should I pass it here. If it is page number one, let me show you what is happening. If it is page number one, the records will start with zero. One, since we have only two two records per page for now, this example is two records per page. Let's consider that example. So page number one is there, and in my backend call, it is called page number zero. Okay, what user will see? U user has uh, user will think it is page number one. User will think. But in reality, it is page zero because my page start with zero, one, two, three, and all. Reality is this. So record will be zero and one. We have to start with the record number. So we put zero. That means it is the first page. Now if I go to another page, page number two, user will think it is page number two, but in reality, it is page number one as per my coding. Okay, reality is this page number one. Okay, so whatever user is seeing, coding is one less than it. Now the records will be two and three. Let's go to page number three. And in reality, it is page number two for us. And he user will see records number four and five. Now, if page is zero, starting point is zero. Okay, so consider this page is zero, starting point is zero. Second case, page is one, starting is two. This two number. Okay, starting is two. Let's go to the third case. Page is Two. Starting is four. This is the four. Starting point is four. Let's try to go to page number four so that you will get a little more idea. Page is three in reality for us. Though user will see it is four. We don't care what user see. What user see, I don't care. I only care of my Thing. So let's delete this so that it is not confusion. So for me it is page 0, 1, 2, 3. And here records will be 6 and 7. So what we get in front page is 3, starting is 6. Now can you can you derive something which I will put here so that, you know, it should take this value, 0, 2, 4, and 6. So can you take an inference from this page and the maximum record, max is 2. Can you take some mathematical formula or equation would take the page and the max and give me this result? What formula I should put it here so that it should take the page and the max and give me this result? Try to logically find the conclusion that page is 1, max is 2, starting is 2. Page is 2, max is 2, starting is 4. Page is 3, max is 2, starting is 6. We need the starting number here. Yeah, but what multiplication what? I want the exact multiplication. This logically, what I should put it here, so every time I get starting based on this knowledge. That means if it is page 0, maximum is 2, I should put pass starting 0. Page is 1, starting is 2, maximum is 2. So 2, 
and page one is starting is two. Max is two, page is two, starting is four. So based on page and max, we need to deduct a formula so that I get the starting number. There's no I, there's page and max. Page and max, I need only formula based on page and max. There's no I, I don't see I. Page into max, Shweta is right, page into max. Page plus one is not right. Page into max, zero into two, answer is zero. One into two, answer is two. Two into two, answer is four. Three into two, answer is six. So we need page into max. So instead of skip zero, I will say page into max. So when we are on the page one, <coughs> we always start with zero. When we are on the page two, we start with the two or four or six. This is how we will do. So now let's go to the page and see if it is working. So now you will see only two are displayed. Though total records are 11, but two are displayed because we are on the page number one, that is zero. Let's try to manually change the page number to one. So I am right now in the page number one. So if I refresh, you will see the records are different because now we are on the page number one. <coughs> I go to page number two. Records are different. Page number three. This I am doing manually, but we have to do programmatically. See, records are different. So whenever we change the page, the records are coming different because different pagination goes here and different starting point is there. Now, let's start to put the pagination bar so that we do this pagination automatically. So in the material UI, we'll see what is there in the pagination. So we have this pagination. So there are a lot of pagination available here. You can use anything you want that experiment with different pagination I will try to experiment with one of the pagination to show you a sample. Let's do this table pagination which looks like this one. Okay, it looks like this one. So let's try to put this one. So for that it's saying import the pagination. So I'll import this pagination. Okay, what is the next line? Don't worry about this one. We will do it later. Now, call this table pagination. So let's put that table pagination above or below the total record found. Okay, put it here. And it's saying on page change what you want to do on rows, uh, it's saying what are the, how many rows per page you want it, and on rows per change what you want. Okay, so we need to, we need to figure out this one. So let's try to do first one. I will put my function in on all the pages. And how many rows per page, it is nothing but the max value which I created. And this one is, I will write on the function and I will see what is coming here. So I can change it. Same thing I will do it here. So whenever rows will change, I will see what is coming in the console.log. And based on that, I will, I will try to write something here, my code. Count, total number of count. How many total number of count? It is state dot count. So count is state dot count. Okay, let's let's see what is happening. So I see one to two of eleven. Now see what will happen when I go to next page. Okay, next page is giving me E. Okay, so let's try to see the document of it first. 
I'll go to the documentation of table pagination. And here I'll go documentation is this table pagination. In the table pagination, okay, let's let's forget this document for now. I will go to that document again, but let me see how he is handling handle change page. So handle change page he is calling he is calling this change page. So he he needs two very two parameters, event and new page. So let's try to use this one. So whenever I do handle page change, I get two variables event and new page. Event is not needed here, new page is needed. Let's see what new page is coming. So when I go to next page, you will see E is 1, that is page number 2. So always E is 1 coming 1 because we have not changed the page. So what is happening when I click next, page is coming 1 because the current page is the 0 1. First time it goes as a 0 1. So now what I will do, I will call my set page function. And on page change, I will call my set page with the new value, that is new page. So this will give me the new page. Now let's check it. So I'm on the first page, I'm seeing 1 to 2. Let's go second page. When I click next button, the page changes to 1 and we get the new results. Then I go to next page, next page. I'm getting the results page on the page which I am there. Now we'll try to change the rows per page. So when I go to rows per page, I put 10. I see it has a target and target has the value of 10. So we need to take care of this when I change the rows per page. So for rows per page, I need to call the set max. So in the row per page, I will call set max. And if you see their sample, when they row, when they call the rows per page, they use the parse int of event dot target dot value, and they also set page equal to zero. So we need to do same thing. I need to use the parse int. So for the set max value, I will say parse int and instead of e, e, event I will put e, e dot target dot value. So whenever someone try to change the rows per page, I change the max value. I also call the set page equal to zero because tomorrow you are on the 10th page and if you don't put set page equal to zero, it will disrupt your pagination and I will show you in a bit how it will disrupt. So let's start with starting one. I change it to 3, 4. And now I will change it to 10 per page. As soon as I change to 10, you see 1 to 10 here. And it start from the 0 page. And when you go next page, it is only one record. Now if you change it to 25, it will again start with the 0 page. Because I put 0 page here. If I don't do this set page equal to 0, what will happen? See. So right now I am showing two per page. If I go to last page, now I try to change it to 25. See, it is disrupting my pagination because I'm not setting the page equal to zero. Whenever we try to change the rows, we need to start with a zero again. Otherwise it will break the, break the records. So we need to call this set page. So whenever we try to change this rows per page, we need to we need to keep the page zero. So if I start with 25, it's starting with the page. Okay, and here you only see option 10, 25, 50, 100, but you can customize it to whatever you want. You can add or delete by saying one option, and that option is, here we'll see what is that option. That option is, This one, 
rows per page options and you can pass as an array what you want option so for our case I will add this rows per page equal to I will pass array and inside array I can say I want one row per page two row per page five row per page ten row per page twenty five row per page fifty or hundred okay so I give more options one two and all so now if I refresh the page you will see I have the options one two five whatever you want let's say tomorrow I am on the second page I change it to one per page it goes to first page and then I go one one page per page okay so this is how we implement this pagination so whenever we try to implement pagination we always have to call on page we have to call the set page and on row change we have to call the set max and also we have to change the set page equal to zero that is what we have to do also whenever you try to change the keyword let's say you try to change the keyword and you click the submit here also I want to make the page starting with the zero otherwise let's say you have only one record for that keyword and you're on the second page you will again get the problem so now what will happen I will refresh the page I'm on the second page or third page I will put the keyword why 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 and I click the search button and I move to the first page because I put set page equal to zero and that is why I needed it because there is no second page so whenever I put the keyword I need to change the pagination to zero so what we are doing let me regroup it what we are doing in this pagination we are setting two variable one is pagination page and one is a maximum per page we get some default value on it and we pass both these value as a dependency to my get query this is the get record function and here I put get skip and limit skip is created based on this logic we put the skip with the page into max and the limit is max limit is max now we in we created one pagination we call the pagination from the material guy even if you build your own pagination you need to create these two functions for it to make for it to work so right now these two are already given by material guy if you build your pagination you have to give these two and uh, these two functions are for it so whenever someone try to change the page we set the page to the new page value and whenever someone change the row per page we change the set max and set page set page is also changed here in the here in the keyword change in the keyword change button okay so I will give you two minutes or five minutes to finish this first add this part and then I will scroll down so you can write that one
Is it done? Okay, so if you're not done, you can go through the video and do it. So we have done the master page today. And we'll try to organize this page tomorrow. A lot of code is there on one page. And we'll try to organize it tomorrow and see how much we can put it in another page and call it. Okay, so I don't like so many things on one page, maybe dividing this into subcomponents and putting the code in different various files. I will do that tomorrow. And to do application I did yesterday and similar to this, I will be doing the chat application after I'm done with this reorganizing part. So that's all for today. Any questions?